Best seen from infidelity. Interior, courtroom, day. The courtroom is a full house. Joshua and Percy sit at the prosecution's table, and Michael, Felicity, and Ethan are on the defendant's side. Joshua rises from behind his desk anxiously. Uh, we would like to call our next witness, Your Honor. Proceed. We call Detective Claudia Reynolds, PPD forensic analyst, to the stand. Detective Claudia Reynolds is a thin, wiry young woman, dressed for the occasion as a scientist. We had her wear a lab coat for, for credibility. Nice move. Cut to Claudia on the stand. What did you first discover when you walked in that house? There was no sign of forced entry. However, everything in the kitchen was in disarray. So you would say that the struggle began in the kitchen? Yes, I suppose. There were dishes, cans, and containers scattered all over the place. How did this happen according to your analysis of the scene? The suspect would have started choking the victim in the middle of the room. We determined that the left arm would have grazed and knocked over the dish drainer next to the sink before the victim was pushed back against the cupboard doors. Her right hand then opened the cupboard door just above her head level, used to beat against the suspect as a sign of struggle, then spilling the canned goods and Tupperware. Anything else you've noticed? The struggle moved from the kitchen to the living room, where more items were found scattered. Was that where you found the body? She was found flat on her stomach in the living room on the couch. Felicity looks at Ethan for signs of guilt, but draws nothing. What would you say she was doing that evening? She was preparing chicken stir-fry with vegetables and brown rice. Joshua walks back to his desk and takes out a file. Is it true that a takeout dinner was also found in the kitchen? Yes, that's true. So we have proof that someone brought home takeout dinner, even though she was already cooking stir-fry. That's what we suspect. The bag was found sitting on the kitchen counter, and the police claimed it was as warm as the food on the stove. Interesting. You prepared this forensics report for the PPD, correct? I did. You described the DNA evidence as, and I quote, substantial in all areas of the home, including those marked by the crime scene investigation team. That's right. I'll review then. Uh, Rebecca Stevens was strangled in her kitchen, a struggle that spilled into the living room where Ethan Calloway, according to DNA evidence, dragged her to her death. Uh, knowing he would be under suspicion, he brought home a takeout order and claimed they had an innocent dinner date, just to defend his case against his act of violence. Joshua looks at Felicity with some arrogance. You're a witness. Felicity gets up and struts over to the witness stand with a little attitude. Mrs. Reynolds, how appropriate of you to serve your civic duty dressed like a science undergraduate. Objection. Withdrawn. Withdrawn. Mrs. Reynolds, your team of forensic analysts found both a late dinner on the stove and in a takeout bag on the counter, correct? Claudia nods her head in agreement. Answer the question. Yes. So, it's possible that she picked up some food on her way home to enjoy while preparing a meal for the future? It's possible, but who does that? It's a yes or no question. Yes, it's possible. You mentioned substantial DNA evidence of my client, both in your report and here on the stand. That's correct. What kind of DNA did you collect? Hair follicles and skin cells. And did this DNA evidence identify the defendant? His DNA was all over the house. He lives there. Where else would you find his DNA? Don't you have skin cells and hair follicles in your home? I certainly do, but with all due respect, I'm not the one on trial here. And you're not in the jury box either. Let me ask you another question. In your field, is a crime scene's evidence occasionally misinterpreted by its analysts? Sometimes, but... So, for example, Spilled food and containers could be a case of sheer clumsiness. Are you serious? Are you? I've been a forensic analyst for years. My job is to tell the victim's story by way of evidence. Don't question my credentials. I graduated at the top of my class in forensic science and criminology. I'm sure you're an authority on crime scene investigation. But if I understand correctly, the analysts are neither the first nor second respondents to a crime scene, are they? We arrive after the police and the coroner in a murder, but I don't see the relevance. So it's possible that if you didn't misinterpret the evidence, 
that it could have been sabotaged, manipulated, or at least contaminated by those who preceded you. Sure. No further questions. <laughs>